Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a good day today. Uh, so, Nephilim cows. I, I, I swear, the world will just find any excuse to uh, mess with the genetics of animals just so they can uh, play God. But there's a recent um, story. This, co- this comes from Breaking Israel News. That Israeli scientists now create cows that produce less gas and more milk. So you got the the you, you have the solution to two fake problems here: global warming and uh, and uh, um, starvation in the world. Not saying that starvation is a fake problem, but it is blown out of proportion. And I I don't buy for a second that the only way to combat it is by genetically altering food. I don't I I, I don't buy that for a second. But uh, but th- this this is uh, the solution they propose uh, to get rid of both of these these so called problems. Uh, and it's it's absolutely ridiculous. So you guys know I'm a big I'm a big supporter of Israel. Uh, you, you know we actually support two ministries that go out and try to spread the gospel to the Jewish people to you know so they can know who their Messiah is. Love love you know love the Jewish people. But th- this this Israeli uh, science experiment is ridiculous. It is out of hand. It is evil. So it says. The article goes go, goes and you know it says cows grazing in a pasture look innocent enough given uh, giving milk or selfless selflessly preparing themselves for slaughter to provide man with meat, but they also endanger the environment by emitting methane <laughs> gases that promote dangerous global warming. Uh, where do you have to be? What position do you have to be in life to believe something like that? Like you know, cows have been around basically forever, right? Uh. Anyway, it says we approach a point of no return in terms of climate change caused by mankind and Europeans catch their collective breath following the highest temperatures ever recorded across the continent. Greenland's ice is melting at a fast pace and communities in the U.S. Plain State continue to assess the damage from unprecedented flooding and tornadoes. All right, now I'm just going to stop there. There is nothing to say how much if any effect mankind has on these uh these global changes these 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 weather patterns we don't know if this is a natural occurring thing uh we don't know if mankind is contributing in some way and if mankind is then how much there there's no there's no scientific study saying that also this whole idea that there's a consensus for one thing even if there was a consensus on global warming that wouldn't matter uh there's been a consensus on a lot of things that uh, have turned out to be wrong scientifically but there isn't a consensus there is uh there is research being done to show that uh man kind if if we have any effect at all that the effect is so minimal so instead of focusing on cows that are passing too much gas uh and instead of focusing on that maybe we need to focus better on predicting these naturally occurring weather patterns and things and then fi- finding ways to help people uh defend against them in some way you, you, you know uh so uh, but cutting greenhouse gases just isn't going to do it. And e- even if we did, e- even if we did, for one thing, for one thing, come on, the cows, that that is such a low contributor. That is absolutely ridiculous. And why is it only the cows? Why not horses and bulls and chickens and insects and people? And, you know, but but that's coming. We're, we'll have we'll have a gas tax, I'm sure. Uh, it says Professor Itzhak Mizrahi of the Department of Life Sciences at Ben-Gurion University of the Negev BGU in Beersheba and the National Institute uh, for Biotechnology in the Negev NIBN offers some relief that will play a critical role in ensuring food security and fighting global warming. An international research team that Mitzrahi uh, heads that Professor Emeritus R.J. Wallace of Scotland's University of Aberdeen has found that cow genes can be used to control rumen microbiomes, a complex dynamic ecosystem composed of mainly uh, anaerobic bacteria, protozoa, anaerobic uh, fun, fun, fungi, fungi, don't know how to say that word, fungi. Uh, I've heard it said a uh, a bunch of different ways. Still don't know what the correct one is. Uh, Microorganisms that produce methane and phage viruses that replicate within viruses. These genes can control the amount of greenhouse gases that animals emit. In addition to the discoveries 
addition to scientific knowledge, their findings have profound implications for dairy and beef farmers trying to reduce their industry's contribution to climate change, as well as bolster dairy farmers' attempts to maintain or improve milk production uh, efficiency while maintaining product safety. All right, all of this does nothing. Even if even if Israel and America cut out all of our greenhouse gases and if we just went totally just green energy, uh, China is such a big contributor. It, w- it wouldn't make a difference. China alone contributes so much more than, uh, than, than we do. It wouldn't make any difference. So what is the point? But again, all of this is, is really for nothing. Uh, all of this is to fix a fake problem that doesn't, that doesn't even really exist. Uh, yes, there are climate changes that occur. Uh, and yes, we, we probably should be focusing our energy and trying to predict those so we can, you know, warn people ahead of time, uh, you know, if a flood is going to is likely to happen or or uh, or a hurricane or a tornado or so, something like that. You know, I mean, they say it's impossible to predict this stuff, but I bet if we put our energies into that pursuit, we'd have a we'd have a better shot. But instead, uh, we want to genetically alter cows, essentially making Nephilim cows to fix this fake problem. Why do we say Nephilim cows? Because we know from the book of uh, uh, Genesis and then extra biblically um, Jubilees and Enoch that there, were, there was a time where the fallen angels uh, first uh, copulated with mankind and created these giants, but also these extra biblical books say that they sinned against the animals as well, corrupting the whole earth where God had to destroy everything. And there are many people that believe that was a genetic corruption. Uh, and that, that's what brought about Nephilim. Uh, so ne- that, that Nephilim may not have only been human uh, fallen angel hybrids, but there could have been animal hybrids as well. So we're heading back towards that day now with all this genetic engineering going on. And the way that they always do it, the, the way that they excuse it is to is some humanitarian effort to fix some problem. We have to genetically modify all of our food. Otherwise, people uh, in, in impoverished areas won't have enough food to eat. Uh, in, instead of focusing on trying, in, instead of messing with God's creation, how about trying to figure out a way to uh, produce natural food in these areas? But no, they, they want to rely on these types of things, on, on sci- scientific advances where we don't know where we don't know the logical conclusion. We don't know where all this stuff is going to lead. The closest thing that we have as an indicator uh, is what, what we read about in Genesis 6, what happened back then. So it says, the study, which covered over 1,000 cows uh, in Italy, Finland, Sweden, and the United Kingdom, found that a small number of host-determined uh, heritable microbes make significant contributions to explaining experimental variables and host uh, phenotypes. This, they predict, will lead to microbiome-led breeding slash genetic programs. So it's not just breeding, it's genetic programs as well to provide a sustainable solution to increase efficiency and reduce emissions from livestock that chew grass and hay. Uh, Breeding is one thing. You know, if if you're, if you're just doing, if, if you're, taking your animals and having them do what they're going to do in nature anyway, that's one thing. But genetic engineering is, is unnatural. It's against creation. Uh, and again, it's, it's a solution to a fake problem. So uh, while ignoring the, the real problems going on. Uh, so the article goes on. You can check it out yourself if you want, but that's basically the gist of it. Nephilim cows uh, that, that are going to be less gassy and produce more milk or, or more food or, or, you know, genetically engineering these things to produce more food. And we don't know the quality of that food. I imagine it's, it, if it's unnatural, it can't be good. It can't, it's not, it's not going to integrate very well with our bodies, you know, when we, when we ingest it because our bodies are built to naturally ingest what grows in nature, you know? Uh, so if we're going to be messing around with that and making salmon peaches and stuff, if you haven't heard about that, they, they, uh, they genetically engineered a, a type of peach that um, that like doesn't freeze in the winter so they can grow it all year round because they put salmon genes in it. Uh, I wouldn't eat that. But you know what? They don't have to tell us, and that's the scary thing. They don't have to tell us if food has been genetically modified, so they're actually taking away your choice. They're taking away your freedom to choose if you want to ingest GMO food or not. <laughs> 